Welcome to another video. This week, we're gonna learn how to make a typical Hollywood classical style theme. This is the kind of music that you'll hear in genres like historical fiction or period dramas. In other words, we're gonna learn a template for writing music that sounds like this. So the first thing we'll want to do is to set the stage for our theme by looking at the tempo and the time signature. You'll find that most classical style themes will stick to a simple meter, like 4-4 or 3-4 time, and tend to work with a moderate tempo, somewhere between 90 to 110 beats per minute. Our example was written in 4-4 time, and with a tempo of 100 beats per minute. Harmony-wise, this style of music is actually pretty simple. You'll just want to pick either a major or minor key and stick to using mostly triads. There's no real reason to get too fancy here, since most of the personality from this template will come from the orchestration. However, if you really want to get a classical feel to your music, you can try using a German augmented sixth chord in your cadence. The German augmented sixth is a predominant chord, and it's widely associated with classical music even by people who don't necessarily listen to a lot of classical music. It sounds like this. Now, creating a German augmented sixth is pretty simple. If you're working in a major key, just start with a regular 5 to 1 cadence, which, in the key of C major, is G7 to C major. Next, place another one chord just before the five, which in our case is another C major. However, this time we're going to take the third scale degree and lower it a half step to turn C major into C minor. Then we're going to put the whole thing in second inversion by making sure the fifth scale degree is in the bottom. If you're starting to feel lost here, I recommend checking out my playlist Harmony for Composers after this video to learn more. But for now, the last thing we need to do is to just add a 2 minor 7 chord, which in the key of C major would be D minor 7. We're going to place this chord in second inversion as well. But then we're also going to take the first and third and raise them one more half step. Then we'll take our fifth, which is our new bass note, and we're going to lower that a half step as well. And there we have it, a German augmented sixth for a major key. For minor keys, you'll want to follow the same initial steps, so that we have a minor one in second inversion, a five seven, and then another minor one. But then we're going to use a four minor seven instead of a two minor seven, which in the key of A minor, coincidentally, is also going to be a D minor 7. We'll place it in first inversion, and then just raise that root another half step. And here we have a German augmented sixth for minor keys. If we look at the chord progression from my example, you'll see that I used a German augmented sixth to end my whole piece. The only difference here is that I used a little bit of voice leading to make the transition a bit smoother. When voice leading predominates like this, just make sure the correct notes are in the bass line. All the upper voices can then be voice led however you'd like. Now, as I mentioned earlier, most of this genre's personality is going to come from the orchestration. Melody-wise, you can pretty much do anything you'd like, but the arrangement is going to focus mostly on using strings and woodwinds. Brass instruments won't be nearly as prominent in this style because the modern brass section wasn't fully developed until well after the classical period had ended. When arranging your piece, you'll want to start with a simple rhythmic pulse in your bass line. Here, I took my original bass line and played it in straight eighth notes in the mid strings, and straight quarter notes in the low strings. The chord should also be rhythmic and bouncy, but with a different rhythmic motif than your bass line. Here, I had my second violins play this part. Last but not least, I gave the first violins a simple counter melody, or arpeggio, that moves a little slower than the other string layers by using quarter notes instead of eighth notes.
With the strings taken care of, I chose a solo woodwind instrument to play the melody. And if you want to use a few others, you can have them double other parts here and there throughout the piece, like I did here. So with all this information in mind, let's listen to our example one more time. While we listen, I'll include notes on the screen to point out how the template is being used. And with that, we've reached the end of another video. Now, templates like this one can be super helpful, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time you need to write a classical style theme. However, they're cliche for a reason, and you should never rely entirely on a template when trying to write original and emotionally rich music. Once again, I want to thank my wonderful patrons for their support of this channel, as well as each of you who have shown your support through the many kind and supportive comments, emails, and messages that I receive. I appreciate each and every one of you. So until next time, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.